Do your players enjoy burning oil, fireballs, and Molotov cocktails? Would you like to craft some fire markers that are easy? Stay tuned. Welcome back to Starships and Steel. Today, we're helping your game look its best. It's been a few weeks since I put a video out. I was trying to get them out once a week and I just fell behind and then fell behind again. Do you have players that shoot fireballs around? Maybe Molotov cocktails, burning oil, alchemists? Up until recently, I made some, uh, some card markers that I just kind of threw down on the table when there was fire. It worked, but it was not very attractive. I looked at ways that maybe I could do this better, and I came up with these fire markers here. I think they look a lot cooler than little paper things. I mean, hold these up for you. Which one do you think looks cooler? You can see them very well from that distance, but these look cooler. These are simple to make. They use hot glue and tinfoil and some paint. That's it. So we're gonna show you how to build those today. Today we're gonna be drinking some beer, as always. This is a Big Rock Brewery. This is originally from Calgary. This is an English style brown ale. This is a pretty pretty common beer in Calgary, so I've had it before. I happen to have it in the fridge, which makes filming it pretty easy. I don't have to go and get a special one. Put it in my Umbra glass. Pour this up so you guys can see the color. Color isn't always important, but for me, color is very important. I like my, my alcohol to have a nice color to it. So that's pretty, pretty nice. Smells like traditional. I strongly suspect you can buy this pretty much anywhere in Canada. It's not my absolute favorite beverage in the world, but it's not bad. So before we get carried away building our fire markers, there's one more thing I want to do besides drink beer and make you guys all thirsty. Today, I got a package in the mail. We're gonna open it for you guys on camera. Lots of guys do unboxing videos. This is a surprise. It's not really gaming related. It's kind of gaming related. What do we have in here? All right. Check that out. The Hyborian Age by Robert E. Howard. Facsimile edition. Copyright 2015 by Mr. Jeffrey Shanks. Published by Skelos Press. Constructing an age undreamed of. When Robert E. Howard's Conan the Sumerian debuted in the December 1932 issue, of Weird Tales, it not only introduced the reader to a significant and influential character, but also to the Hyborian Age. A fictional world set in the dim prehistoric past before the dawn of recorded history. The now familiar opening lines of that first Conan story, The Phoenix on the Sword, written as though they were an excerpt from some lost annal of antiquity, gives the reader a taste of this forgotten epoch and exotic locales and denizens that could be found therein. Know, O oh Prince, that between the years when the oceans drank Atlantis and the gleaming cities, and the years of the rise of the sons of Arius, there was an age undreamed of, when shining kingdoms lay spread across the world like blue mantles beneath the stars, Numidia, Ophir, Rithunia, Hyperborea, Zamora with its dark-haired women and towers of spider-haunted mystery, Zingara with its chivalry, Koth that bordered on the pastoral lands of Shem, Stygia with its shadow-guarded tombs, Hyrcania whose riders wore steel and silk and gold. But the proudest kingdom of the world was Aquilonia, reigning supreme in the Dreaming West. Now, that gives me shivers. This introduction to the milieu of Conan suggests a rich and detailed world that Howard obviously took considerable time in developing, especially for a new, unproven series in a pulp magazine. So this goes on to talk about that. Talks about his uh, Hyborian essay. Got some cool pictures in here. We get into the meat of it, which is the Hyborian Age by Robert E. Howard. A probable outline of Conan's career by P. Schuler Miller and John D. Clark, PhD, with an introductory letter by Mr. H. P. Lovecraft. Price: thirty-five cents. I bought it for. Well, the price on here is. Twelve ninety-five. I probably didn't pay that much more than that Canadian, actually. This is going to look pretty cool. It's got a uh, map of the Hyborian Age from a map prepared by uh, from a map from Robert E. Howard. Robert E. Howard's Hyborian Age essay in print. That's pretty cool. I have access to this online, but in print's even cooler. Anyways, cheers. Let's build some fire markers. 
Okay, here we are at the table. First thing we're going to need is some bases for our fire markers. We're going to use some washers. Need a glue gun, of course, because what's a craft for D&D &D without a glue gun? Some glue sticks, because we're going to use a lot of glue with this craft. And, of course, some tin foil. We're going to use the tin foil as an armature for our sculpture, essentially. So we'll just get on with that, show you how this thing works. So you get your tin foil, like that, and just uh, tear a piece off. And kind of crinkle it up and roll it up until you get a kind of cone shaped piece of tin foil. It's going to be one of our, our blasts, I guess, is the best description for it. This is going to be the skeleton for our fire marker. You just keep doing that over and over. Make a cone, roll it up. Having a little bit in the bottom isn't bad because you have something to glue to. Then we're just going to do a whole bunch of these real fast here until we get like five or six of them. There we go, we got uh, one, we got here, one, two, three, four, five, six, yeah, three, four, five, six, all different sizes, different lengths, which is good. Once you get that, get your uh, fire markers and your hot glue gun, and just glue these down to the washer, however you think will look good. Some tasty beer. Just keep gluing those down, eventually you'll get a little explosion looking thing. It's kind of silver right now. Won't work perfectly well for a fire marker, but it gives us a good good base structure to build our marker on. There we go. And that gives you an idea where we're going. Just kind of position those however you want them. You know, probably have some glue wisps on there because it's hot glue and that's the way of things. Just pull those off. That's going to be an ongoing thing through this whole process. Now you could just take your glue and start spreading it over there. You're going to find that it's hot and it's hard to hold on to. So we're going to take a page out of painting, take a pot, whatever you want to use. I'm going to glue our marker onto that as a handle. There, now we can hold on to it easier. So, we're going to take our glue and run it up and down our tinfoil armatures, cover them up as best we can. And we don't have to be putting down glue the entire time, but you know, get them covered up. We can use the hot glue tip marker to, uh, or the hot hot tip on the glue gun, to move that around a little bit. So generally, I'll just keep doing that until it's all covered up. Keep pulling the wisps off. Keep adding the glue until it's covered. Just give us a nice textured surface to paint to. So here we are, just using the hot glue gun after it's dried, after it's cooled off, to go back in and add a little bit more texture. There we go. It just makes it look a little bit cooler when you're done. Just go over it so you get that pretty much all fixed up. Then just go back through and make sure that everything's covered. It's not the end of the world if there's a little bit of tin foil uncovered, but you want to get most of it covered up, like 99%. Okay, so we're going to use some white paint. It's going to be our base coat. Some yellow paint. It's going to go over the white, give us a fire base and some red which we're going to use to paint red and blend with the yellow to make orange. Oops. Some paint and then just you know paint this up paint the whole thing with white. I generally do the whole thing and then go back and do it again. So we'll just speed this up and go through it until it's uh, covered up. We got our first coats on there this will allow us to see where we've missed, where there might be some stuff we need to cover up again. So I just go back over it again, fill in those spots, and then go back over it with the brush to make sure all the brush strokes are kind of in an upwards direction. Yeah. And that gives us a base coated blast marker. And as you can see, it already looks way cooler than just the uh, tinfoil used to. So once that's done, Get your brush uh, cleaned off, and then move on to uh, painting some yellow on this thing. Get some yellow in our palette, and then just, again, I cover the entire thing with yellow. Paint that thing up completely. Some yellow on there. Once this is done, I, again, go back in with uh, another layer of this, and make sure I've covered it up, and make sure all the brush marks, if they exist, are, are going up. So once that's done, we can move on to painting with a little bit of red. Take some red, 
So now your palette, some red paint on there. And now I put on a, a dab of red paint, just the, the very tip of the fire markers, tip of each of the flames. And I, this is what goes on pretty, pretty thick, pretty heavy. And then I just uh, wipe the brush off and then pull that paint down to the yellow. If your paint's a little bit wet, the yellow stuff's a little bit wet, it's not going to be the end of the world. It's going to help blend it together a bit better. So you're going to get a blend and then a bit of a dry brush at the bottom, leaving a little bit of yellow exposed, but making it look more like a fire. Okay, we're just going to go back in with red. And we're going to repaint the tips a tiny bit just to give them a little bit more vibrant red color. And that'll make it look just like that. So that's pretty cool. The next step is completely optional. We're going to get some uh, Liquitex. This is a matte, or matte, this is a gloss. Gloss varnish. So if you want your fires to be uh, kind of glossy looking, you can use this. If you don't really care for it, then I would not bother. Uh, warning, make sure your paint is completely dry. Well, this is just going to move all your paint around and maybe ruin your paint job. Just cover this all up and then it will be all nice and nice and shiny. So when you're done with that, wait for that thing to dry. Oh, that's one other thing I want to talk about here. This technique of using armatures and hot glue can be used for all kinds of things. For an example, this, these are stalagmites that I uh, made. I just painted them brown. And then here we have another fire example. Some fire pot with a torch coming out of it. These are just Q-tips and I've used either tin foil or the actual cotton as the armature for it. These are removable and goes back in there so we can have different fire sizes. It's a pretty cool easy technique. Um, you could probably make rocket markers for sci-fi with this. Maybe I'll do that for a video. But it's pretty pretty good technique. I like it. It's uh, very versatile. Alright, so now it's painted. Get a razor knife and go in here nice and uh, carefully. Find a place to put your knife underneath and then just work at the fire marker until it pops off. It's like that. If you've got a lot of glue on the bottom, just take your razor knife like I'm going to here and then just kind of cut down to the washer until it sits level. And once you've got that all cut off, you'll have a nice fire marker that sits flat. And we can take this and see how that looks in play. Okay, we have our adventurers coming into this dark cave. They move forward and they find a chamber, some stalagmites in there. They move in, past that chamber, another little elbow. And come in there and nice and cautiously, oh they find a room with a well. What's in the well? The archer moves up to see what's going on. Oh no, tentacles! This looks bad for our heroes. Oh no. Ah! They change position. Oh, fire! Alchemist to the rescue! They fall back, so there you go. If you like this video, please hit like. And if you want to see more, I would suggest subscribing to the channel. And I will see you guys next time.